Welcome one and all to another special episode of Somehow We Manage. Today we have joining us North Carolina Director of Athletics, Bubba Cunningham, and he's got a lot of great stuff with us today. He talks North Carolina and the ACC and where they stand in all this conference realignment talk um, and all the changes that are going on in, in college athletics. And he also talks about his time at North Carolina, you know, and what it's meant to him to be a part of such a prestigious university, both academically and athletically. Um, so he's got a lot of great stuff to share with you today. Don't go anywhere. You're not going to want to miss this newest edition of Somehow We Manage. Joining us now on Somehow We Manage is the athletic director for the University of North Carolina, Mr. Lawrence Cunningham, better known as Bubba in the in here in the sports world. And we're very excited to have him on today. I believe a congratulations is in order because you've been uh, you're recently named the chair of the uh, the basketball committee. So congratulations on that. Well, thanks. Yes, uh, the vice chair for this year, then uh, if everything goes well, then chair the following year. So I'm uh, looking forward to it. That's been a great committee to be on. Right, right. Well, um, you know, here in the news in the last couple of days, obviously, there's been some tragedy on the on the campus of the University of North Carolina. Um, and I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about it. Can you just fill us in on what you know about the situation that's happening you know, here in the last week? Yeah, really, really tragic and unsettling. And, uh, you know, we had a, a, a PhD student uh, shoot and kill his uh, advisor. And, uh, you know, the entire campus was on lockdown for about three hours. And it was uh, very unsettling and really, really challenging for the community for those three hours. And now there's a grieving process that uh, everyone's going through now. And there was an incredible vigil last night to honor the uh, the faculty member. His family was there, his wife and children, his mother. And uh, it was really moving. Incredible turnout by our students. Um, so I, I give our coaches and staff a lot of credit for how they've come together and dealt with it. Uh, it's just completely sad. It's senseless and uh, very dis discouraging and disappointing. And you don't ever think it's going to happen near you or around you. You read about it, but... Uh, it can happen anytime, and uh, we're we're thankful that um, our group is resilient, and uh, we'll be able to come back from it. Right. Well, and you certainly have all the thoughts and prayers and good wishes from us here at Somehow We Manage. But you know, we'll we'll try to make things a bit more uh, fun and lighthearted today, like we we talked about earlier. You know, we got football season right around the corner. Um, I want to talk about you specifically here to start, um, because you know you you head the ship at one of the most prestigious universities in in uh in America, both academically and athletically. I mean, you talk about forty nine team national championships. So for you, what does it mean to be a part of such a prestigious university? Well, I'm very, very fortunate. Obviously, the university is a couple hundred years old. The athletic program has been successful for so many years. And, and you know, it's been successful because we have great coaches. And we are a, a coach-led department. Our uh, coaches set the example. They, uh, they recruit great students. They recruit a great staff. They share. They communicate. And uh, for me to be a part of it, it, it's an honor and a privilege. I enjoy it. We had a coaches meeting this morning. And uh, each and every time I have one, uh, I learn a great deal from them about how to uh, to work with people, how to be competitive. Um, and it's just it's 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 really just an enjoyable thing and to be with our students. And, you know, we're going to compete with a couple of different games tonight and the weekend will have a, a full slate of activities. And um, as you said, it's just you get to go to games. You, there's a lot of things in our business that aren't as much fun, whether you're talking about conference affiliation, media rights and things of that nature. Yeah. But truly what we do is provide opportunities for kids to come to college, get an education and participate in sport. And I always think about if you can manage and lead and make your decisions based on those values and those priorities, then things are going to work out for you. So, and, and like I said, you know, not just uh, doing great things on the court, but also doing great things in the classroom, right? So how does a man in your position juggle both high level athletics and high level academics? Well, when I first got here, I mean, it's not very, you know, sexy or anything. It's just that we we did a strategic plan and we started talking about how do we want to be successful? We want to be successful academically and athletically. And there are metrics in both that you can measure. And so we want to be top three in our conference, top three in the country in every sport, academically and athletically. And we measure it. We measure it every year. What's your graduation rate? What's your GPA? What's your APR? What's your GSR? So all those metrics go in and we try to say, are we top three in the league? Are we top 10 in the country? 
Same thing with the winning percentages and where you finish in your conference, where you finish nationally. And uh, and we really strive to to get there. And so that's how we try to balance it. You know, if we can do that, then we think we're providing that great experience to play and get a great education. So we're here at the tail end of summer. Uh, football season is about to start. And this summer has actually been pretty uh, eventful here in the in the uh, world of sports, especially college athletics. Not always that way. Um, but, you know, a lot of things changing, you know, in college athletics, as they have been, you know, for some time now. Um, but you look at the Pac-12, you know, all but dissolving, you know, to some point. Um, people are talking about Florida State possibly leaving the ACC. You know, all the talking heads, you know, you see it on ESPN all day. So what has been your, your reaction, your thought process to all the changes changes coming through conference realignment well i think that the the conference realignment as we we talked earlier i think what we've we've done over the last 20 to 30 years is we started talking about media rights conference affiliation and revenue and we we need to continue to keep our focus on the student we need to con- focus on education and providing these opportunities for kids to play we know what the professional model looks like it is you know the most popular person the most popular sport gets the most money We've been revenue sharing and providing opportunities for men and women for over 100 years, and we need to figure out the right balance here. And I think we're getting a little tilted toward the professional model more than we need to be. We need to come back. Now, it's not 100 percent driven by decisions we've made. The courts have made some decisions, and I think that that has led us into a different direction. And now we've got to figure out what's the next best thing for our institutions and our leagues as we move forward. And so specifically for North Carolina, as, as you steer the ship here, what is your what is your mindset? Where do you want to see things go as in terms of all these changes, including, you know, things like like NIL? Well, I, I, what we want to do is we have 28 programs and 800 student athletes. I want to make sure we protect those opportunities for those kids to play and those coaches to coach and to get these that education I'm talking about. How we configure ourselves and what that means is going to change in the next, next couple of years. But the instability of conference affiliation, the unknown things about court cases or Congress intervention and things like that, make it more difficult to make long-term decisions. So I think we've got to kind of weather this storm and turbulence and then say, okay, this is what the new future of college athletics looks like. How do we best organize organize ourselves to, to get there? So it's going to take money. The resources are going to be different. The allocation of resources are going to be different. So how do we put ourselves in the best position for our kids and coaches to be successful? And then we just, I, there's, there's not a, a direct answer to that question. Um, and it's going to take some time. So I saw an interview that you did with uh, Adam Gold of ESPN Radio uh, a couple of weeks ago, and you said, you know, the ACC has won like nine national championships over the last year. We're doing just fine. But despite that, everybody seems to think that the ACC is falling apart. You know, that's that's the narrative in the media. Um, so so what do you think the ACC has to do to remain competitive and not get left behind? Well, I think we need to continue to win. And I do think that, you know, I, I've said this for 25 years. When you talk about athletic programs, you talk about how big your budget is. That That's kind of the measure of, hey, this is really good because we have a lot of money. I, I don't Rarely do I hear people talking about we've won a lot of championships or we're really, really successful. We graduate all of our kids. It's all, your, your, your success is measured by the amount of money that you spend. That doesn't make any sense to me. You don't talk to business and say, well, how much did you guys spend last year in your business? Nobody cares how much you spend. They want to know how much you made. And so they don't even talk about that. So how do you measure success? Do you measure by championships? Do you measure by money? Do you measure by net profit? We're an educational institution. I measure it by competitive success, academic success, and creating opportunities for kids to play. And if by those three metrics, we're good. Now, I have recognized that you can't do that if you don't have any money. So you have to generate enough money to sustain your programs and you have to have enough money to continue to compete long term. So there is a balance in there. But I I think we've got our priorities out of whack right now. We need to somehow get those back in alignment. And now you've put a lot of the rumors to rest where people might speculate that UNC wants to to leave the ACC anytime soon. Um, Can you just explain exactly why that is, why UNC has, has no interest in leaving? Well, I think that we have a great league. I've said that for a long time. Are we always pursuing more revenue, more opportunities to provide more opportunities and a better experience for our students? Absolutely. 
And I think at the appropriate time, and I continue to do whatever I can do to make Carolina better. That's what I'm attempting to do. And if I'm part of the ACC, I'm going to do everything I can to make the ACC better. I'm part of the NCAA I'm going to make the NCAA better. I don't agree with everything in every league every time, but I'm going to do what I can to make it better. And I'm always going to have Carolina foremost in my mind. Our student athletes, our coaches, and our future is what I'm asked to do and I will do. And whatever I think is best with the consultation of our chancellor and our board, that's the direction I want to head. So I want to talk a little bit about about football now because, you know, like we talk, it's right there. We can smell it. We can almost grab it. Um, you know, I'm thinking about UNC this year. You've got this Heisman hopeful with Drake May. There, there are some expectations there. And when I think about, you know, like triangle football, I think NC State and North Carolina have both had these great, I mean, NFL caliber Heisman level quarterbacks. And yet, you know, maybe win 9, 10, 11 games, but haven't been able to, you know, maybe get that ACC championship. North Carolina has been close. They've had opportunities over the past few years. So, you know, you've got Drake May. You have this amazing player. You've got some pieces around him. What do you think success looks like for North Carolina this football season? Well, you know, we go into a season, we want to win every game we play. I mean, every, every coach goes in, into that. And, you know, some, you know, you've, you've got to be really good. You have to be disciplined. You have to be organized. You have to be lucky at some point. And, you know, so you have to have all that stuff fall into place. So I'm hopeful we're going to have a great season. Would never, ever try to predict how many wins you might get. Uh, but the hope and anticipation is we're going to win them all. And it, it's interesting because we've had a lot of coaches here that have been here a long time. Some have won national championships. Some haven't. But I will say that, you know, Coach Smith was here a long time and couldn't win a national championship, finally got over the hump. We had our, our women's tennis program this past year. We've won, you know, yeah. seven or eight ITAs in the indoor tennis facility. We've got over the hump this year. And you talk to the coaches, you know, they're not any better this year than they were last year, but they finally won a match or two that they hadn't won previously. And all of a sudden they, they, they're in a different club. So, um, you know, we have a guy, uh, we have two guys on our staff that have won national championships uh, between Mac Brown and, um, and Gene Chiswick. So guys have been there and they're trying to demonstrate the way for our players to get there. What's it take to get, and Mac's talking about it quite a bit this year, from good to great. We've been good. Now, how do we get to be great? And we, how do we get to, to get to the college football playoff? How do we win a championship? And those are the little things that he's trying to instill in this team. And I'm hopeful that, uh, that it's taking root. Yeah, and it's very, very hard to take that step. I mean, you see a lot of teams just scratching and clawing, trying to make that next step. Um, yeah. With So with Drake May, um, you know, if, if North Carolina wins six or seven games this year, makes a bowl, um, he, he's going to put up great numbers regardless. I think we all, we all know that. Um, but how successful do you think a season North Carolina has to have for him to be a legitimate Heisman candidate? Well, I think we talk about that all the time. I can't remember. I think there was somebody that won the Heisman Trophy. The team was two and eight. That doesn't happen anymore. That that was back in the 1940s or 1950s. Right. But now you're going to have to win 10, 11, 12 games to even be in consideration for the Heisman, in my opinion. So you've got to be the best player on the on a really, really good team. Maybe not the best team, but you have to be the best player on a very good team to win. So it is a team game, and there's individual awards associated with the team game. And so for, for any of our students to get recognized nationally, we have to have a great year. And I'm looking forward to a great year. And so the great year, it starts this Saturday. You've got a great matchup with, with South Carolina, two uh, cross-state rivals. How do you feel about this weekend's matchup? How do you feel about the season starting? Give us, uh, you know, give us your opinion. Oh, I'm always excited about it. As, as you said, I mean, it's a great time on campus. Um, you know, when you walk around campus, you see the kids going from class to class. You hear the band practicing in the afternoon. You see our teams practicing. To me, that's the start of the fall. That's the start of the academic year. And uh, this year, when it culminates for our first game in football, because we've already had soccer, we've, you know, cross country is running. We've had volleyball. We've had field hockey. We've had a bunch of teams already competing. But now you're going to go down and have game day on Saturday. You're going to play on ABC at 730 on Saturday night, the game of the week. You know, it, you're going to have the band down there. You'll have, a you know, 60,000 fans in the stadium. So that really will give you a great view into what our year is going to look like. We're excited about it, and uh, I can't wait to get down there. Yeah, there's not there's nothing quite like like college football. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's like a um... – 
I don't know. It's it's a congregation, you know, here in the South. Everybody gathers. Everybody's eating. Everybody's tailgating. There's just in basketball, you know, UNC basketball is wonderful, but there's just something about football that just brings people together. I, I agree. It's a wonderful time of year. Um, as I close here, I want to do I want to do some random questions, just some rapid fire here for you. Uh, oh, so my man. first question: AD at North Carolina, Bob at Cunningham, favorite movie of all time. Gosh, I got I got sorely criticized by my family when I answered this question wrong years ago. So I've got to get more to uh, a sports theme, whether well, it's, it's your uh, opinion. How can it be wrong? I mean, you tell uh, your family's not it, here. You tell me. It's too embarrassing to even tell you about that. Um, gosh, now I'm blanking on it. All right. I don't know. Maybe uh, Hoosiers. Hoosiers, that's a, that's a solid pick. Okay, hold on a second. Cause it's this embarrassing pick. Well, Rudy, you maybe Rudy was a good one. It was a walk-on. There's so many good sports movies out there, but every time I get put on the spot like this, I totally blank on it. So, Well, what's this embarrassing movie that you're talking about? Because you've put it I'm out in the air now. I will, I will not say. <laughs> okay, okay. I won't hold you to it. Okay. Favorite musical artist? Who's your top, who's your top uh, artist of all time? Oh, no, that's probably Jimmy Buffett. Jimmy Buffett. Okay. I'm a huge. Well, I shouldn't say that. No, that's another one. I, I should say Eric Church. Eric, Eric Church. Church. Okay. I'll have to go back on that one. So I've been on a huge Jimmy Buffett kick here in the last year or so. I, I was going to go to his concert in Alpharetta, Georgia. Um, but you know, he's been sick here as of late. Um, and so he had he had to cancel that. Okay, give me um what's give okay, me your you, best. You need, you need to cut out that thing about Jimmy Buffett and just use the Eric Church one because he's Eric Church. He's local. Yeah, cut that. You have your producer cut that out. <laughs> okay. Well, can I at least can I at least ask you this? What's your what's your favorite Jimmy Buffett song? Can you pick one? Fins, fins, fins to the left, fins to the right. Have you been yeah. to a Buffett concert? A couple of them. Okay, yeah, nothing. And there you get nothing quite like that either. Okay, how about Eric Church? What's your top Eric Church song? Oh, I can't say that. Eric's Eric's you know that that wouldn't be good for me. It wouldn't be good for my reputation to talk about that. <laughs> okay. Eric's got a few, think- a few a few that are a little sideways. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, I know Eric Church's catalog pretty well, so I could probably have a, a pretty good idea. Okay, I'm going to give you a tough one here. You're probably not going to answer this one, but just answer it honestly. One-on-one basketball game to 21 win by two. Who wins? You or Boo Corrigan? Not even close. Not even close. Me. You? Okay. okay. Well, see, and I, and I thought maybe you might give him the nod because I've, I actually saw him in Raleigh a couple weeks ago. I was like, he's got some pretty good size on him. He's a tall guy. So your your game is pretty good. It was. Okay. I'm old. I'm a lot older than Boo, so he'd probably have to get spot me a couple of points, but it would be it wouldn't be close. <laughs> okay. All right. What is your what's your game look like on the court? What are you? Are you a facilitator? Are you a shooter? What are you? Well, I well, this is a long time ago. I haven't played a lot of basketball lately, but um yeah, my mom used to joke that uh one year one time I had three steals in a basketball game, but it was all from my own teammates. <laughs> no, I didn't pass a whole lot. I was like shoot to get hot, shoot to stay hot kind of mentality. Well, I'll just take that as you were you were a born leader. You wanted to be in control, and that's why you're in the position you are today. That's that's how I'll take that. Okay, well, you're so getting um, me in trouble. you're getting me in trouble on these questions. <laughs> um, so I uh, we I, I went to uh, the Dean Dome for the first time a couple months ago. I worked at, at UNCW. I was a manager for UNC Wilmington, and so we obviously played North Carolina in the first game. And uh, I was you know behind backstage, I guess you could say, and everybody working the game, everybody had on a pair of Jordans. And I was like, well, you know, obviously the, there's a connection there. And so I'm curious for you, I would assume that you have a nice collection of Jordan shoes, I'm assuming. So what is your favorite pair of Jordans that you have been given since you, you've been in North Carolina? Uh, probably the ones, you know, I mean, the ones are, they're a classic. Um, and I don't know all the numbers. I think the 11s are my other ones I like. Is that the one with the patent leather on it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, those are my you know, the ones. Things. I mean, that's that's hard to be. And the, and kids wear those today. I mean, that's just like it's it's universal now. People wearing Jordans. That's that's the thing. That's hip now to wear Jordans. And so I would assume that's pretty good for uh for the brand at North Carolina as well. That everybody's wearing. You know that shoe. People love to wear the you know the baby blue colorway and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Michael hasn't called me to tell me not to wear them, so I guess I'm okay. Okay. <laughs> and so and I, I and here's another question for you, just off the cuff here. Uh, Michael Jordan is th- is that relationship still really good between North Carolina and Michael Jordan? I would assume you know he he comes back when he can. He probably speaks to players, things like that. How is that relationship? It's great. It's really it's great having Michael. You know, having his brand associated with North Carolina. It's uh, and it's aspirational for everybody. You know, and you want to the best you can possibly be in everything that you do. And, and you know that's that's what we strive for. 
All right, so as I close here, my final question, which former Tar Heel has the best golf game? Ooh. I don't, know. I don't know. Davis Love. I don't know. Davis He's got a lot of guys on the tour. <laughs> okay. Are you thinking non golfer? I'm taking it. Well, yeah, I'm thinking like, you know, basketball players, football players, coaches, you know, administrators. Yeah, I don't know. Michael's got to be right up there. Um, you know, Coach Williams was awfully good. Um, I, I'm sure I, gosh, I don't know. Those are the ones that certainly talk about the golf game the most. Um, man, I don't know. Yeah, maybe Mia Hamm. For all I know, Mia Hamm made the yeah. best golfer. Well, another, another great athlete, and I've and I've heard several times that Coach Williams is is quite the 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 golfer, and obviously Michael's probably you know the most competitive on the golf course. I certainly wouldn't uh, put any money on the line when I'm playing Michael. Um, but how is how's your golf game? Are you are you do you play? Not bad. Yeah, Not I bad. tried to get around a little bit. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, uh, we'll we'll close on that, uh, Mr. Cunningham. It's been it's been an honor. It's been a pleasure talking to you today. We appreciate your time. Like I said, I know you're a busy, busy guy, and this is a busy time of year for you. Uh, so we appreciate it. Um, best of luck to you. I know you'll continue to do great work, and best of luck to the Tar Heels this weekend. Maybe they can uh, get a good. That'd be a huge, huge win for them to start the season over an SEC foe across state rivals. So thank you for coming on today. We really appreciate it. Appreciate it. Great to talk to you. A huge thank you to Bubba Cunningham for coming on today and joining us. We know he's a busy guy, and we appreciate him giving us a little bit of his time and sitting down talking with us today. And an even bigger thank you to those of you who watch every week and have been giving us views and comments and whatnot. Uh, as always, we are on all social media outlets. We are on Spotify. We are on YouTube. So continue to watch us and check out our other episodes. There's a lot of great content with Somehow We Manage that you may have missed. So, so check us out, and uh, don't forget to give us a subscribe on YouTube as well. Um, another huge thank Thank you to Mr. J.R. Quitman, Mel Quitman, for uh, producing, as always. He brings this thing to life every week and makes it look all nice and shiny for us. So thank you, J.R. We appreciate you, as always. So signing off now, this has been Kagan Jackson with Somehow We Manage. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.